First, let's explore the essential equipment for temperature control. The main component is a temperature sensor that precisely measures the area to regulate. You'll also need a controller that compares the sensor's reading with the set point and sends a signal to manage the heater. Additionally, a heater and an output device to control it are used. Next, let's explore the control methods in more detail. First, I'll explain on-off and PID control, the most common techniques. Finally, I'll introduce the two degree of freedom PID, an enhanced version of standard PID. Consider an example where an electric furnace's temperature is managed by a controller. In on-off control, the heater turns on when the temperature falls below the set point and off when it exceeds it. The temperature is maintained by repeatedly switching the heater on and off around the set point. This approach can cause temperature fluctuations or hunting because the heater operates strictly at the set point boundary. To minimize hunting and stabilize temperature control, PID control is recommended. Next, let's examine how PID control is used to regulate an electric furnace temperature. PID control combines three key actions, proportional, integral, and derivative. I'll explain the role of each component in detail. In proportional control, the heater's output adjusts based on the difference between target and current temperatures. With only P control, the temperature will stabilize before it reaches the target. The gap is known as offset. Integral control is used to eliminate this offset. It adjusts the heater's output based on the duration and magnitude of the deviation. Even when the deviation reaches zero, the integral component continues to correct aligning the temperature with the set point. With integral control, the set temperature can be reached. PI control has drawbacks, especially its sensitivity to delays. If the heater and sensor are far apart or the object is hard to heat, a time lag may occur between when the heater turns on and the temperature starts rising. This delay, called dead time, can cause overshooting and hunting. PI control increases the heater's output to reach the set temperature. However, the delayed temperature response caused by dead time requires overcontrol, leading to overshoot. Even when trying to suppress the overshoot with opposite control, undershoot occurs for the same reason. This repetition is known as hunting. To address this issue, derivative control adjusts the output based on the rate of change in deviation. As the temperature nears the set point, derivative action becomes negative, acting as a brake. When it falls below, it turns positive, acting as an accelerator. Using derivative control within full PID enables stable temperature control, even with dead time. To perform actual PID control, it is necessary to adjust the P, I, and D parameters. This is because the optimal P, I, and D parameters vary depending on factors such as the characteristics of your control target and heater capacity. The PI and D parameters refer to the PB, TI, and TD constants derived from the PID control equation. Now that was an explanation of on-off control and PID control. In on-off control, the heater operates in two states, on or off, based on the target value leading to temperature fluctuations. With PID control, it is possible to raise the temperature stably without causing fluctuations. PID control determines the heater's output by combining P, I, and D control. In proportional control, the heater's output is determined in proportion to the deviation between the target value and the temperature. In integral control, the output is determined in proportion to the duration and magnitude of the deviation. In derivative control, the output is determined in proportion to the slope of the deviation. To implement PID control, it is necessary to adjust the P, I, and D parameters to match your process. With the explanation so far, stable heating to the set temperature has been achieved. However, even when the set temperature is stable, various factors can cause disturbances, leading to temperature fluctuations. For example, opening the door of an electric furnace to load a workpiece causes the temperature to drop. In the PID control method, a single set of PID parameters controls the response to both the set temperature and disturbances. As a result, there is a trade-off between the response to the set temperature and the response to disturbances. 
if you prioritize the response to disturbances by setting P and I small and D large, overshooting can occur when heating to the set temperature. Conversely, if you prioritize the response to the set temperature by setting P and I large and D small, the response to disturbances deteriorates. By using a two degree of freedom PID control method, it is possible to balance both the response to the set temperature and the response to disturbances. Omron's two degree of freedom PID control improves the response to disturbances with its PID control. However, this can cause overshooting when heating to the set temperature. To suppress the heater's output during heating, a filter is applied to the set temperature during the heating process. This allows for temperature control that balances both target response and disturbance response. Please check Omron's temperature controllers equipped with two degree of freedom PID control from this link. The next video will demonstrate the tuning required for PID control and a live demonstration using Omron's E5CC temperature controller.